Welcome, this is Corey Dahl, and with me today I have another guest from Norfolk Public Schools. This is Mickey Mueller. I'm the Educational Technology Facilitator for Norfolk Public Schools and the unofficial face of Google at Norfolk Public Schools. <laughs> okay, I'll have to add that to the slide next time. Today what we're here to talk about in this 30-minute webinar, um, the topic today is Google Forms, and not necessarily as a basis to you know, describing how to do it and such, but just to talk about some of the changes and some things that you can do with it, as well as ideas for classroom use. Absolutely. We've got some, we, we kind of expect that you already know how to use Google Forms, so we're not necessarily going to go through how to set up a Google Form. But even if you haven't done that, stay with us because we've got some great tips and tricks for you that you can use when you go off on your own and explore how to uh, create a Google Form. Right, because if you're brand new to it, um, and haven't ever used it, you'll still get a, a great idea of why you should be using it or, or ideas for classroom use, personal use, professional use, and things like that. Okay, so some practical uses. There are many, and we just typed a few in here. One is t-shirt orders. If you're someone who is working in school and, you had, and you're, you're in charge of the band, or you're in charge of FCCLA, or you're going on uh, a trip with um, you know, a certain group of people and you want t-shirt orders, rather than one more piece of paper or one more email that you lost or I lost a sticky note that you wrote your name on it, Mickey, you know, with your size. Um, if I use a Google form, I have all that information at my fingertips in a nice neat spreadsheet that I won't lose. Exactly. And um, you can even use an add-in, a script that we're going to talk about later, but you can use a script that will actually email that information back to the person signing up for the t-shirt so they could use it as their receipt. I know at Norfolk Public Schools we have to give everybody a receipt when they turn in money, so this would be an excellent use of a Google form to send that information back to the person who's buying the shirt and they'd have a receipt right there. Right. So as you really get into it, You'll want that automated email to the to the to the certain person or group of people. That way, they know that the information's been shared and so on. Yes, that's wonderful. Voting. You were talking about this. Um, don't you do this at Norfolk, or have you seen it done with we, the voting? Yeah, we don't do it at Norfolk because um, we're not quite there yet. But Milford Public Schools, which is a smaller school down in southeast Nebraska, um, they actually do any kind of voting, whether it's for class um, officers, homecoming candidates. They use a Google form to do to vote for those candidates, um, and it's really easy if you're collecting the usernames as you fill out the as the users submit the forms. You, then it's really easy to go in and sort that data and then um, delete any duplicate votes. Right, right. Here's some other ideas: quizzes, and we're going to at the end, or you could just say assessments in this case. Um, you can use something called Clubru, which we're going to talk about. Um, and give you an idea of how you can not only just use this to take the quiz or the, the assessment or the check for understanding, but you can have it grade for you. And that's just a little teaser. Checking for understanding, you don't have to just use it for quizzes or assessments, but as you're going throughout your lesson, you want to check and see, are they getting what I'm talking about? You can quickly have them click on a link, and then you can see um, how it is they're answering. Okay, next, registration for events. Do you ever have any events that you oh. might want registration for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, anytime we do a technology training at Norfolk Public Schools, we have people sign up for that so we know who, how many are going to attend, and we use Google Forms for all of our registration for that kind of thing. Right, and at this time, too, if you can see the chat room where you're at, if you have other uses that you use it for, please type in ways that you've used it or seen it used in the chat area, and then we'll keep talking, but people can type in there in the chat area, but you can also... Um, just follow along if you wish. Okay, walkthroughs. Many administrators, many, many administrators use a Google form as a walkthrough, and maybe in your district they do this. So that's, again, a form. They walk into your classroom and they see what it is that they're seeing, and when they click submit, it sends an email to the teacher, it sends an email to themselves, and they've got an electronic copy of everything that they're seeing. There are so many uses. Oh, so many uses. I love Google Forms, and um, I think Google Forms is one way to get teachers excited about using Google Apps because they can see a lot of practical applications for using Forms right away. Right, and Lisa says uh, activity verification. I'm assuming meaning um, as people are completing certain activities that they're using the form as a way to prove that they've finished it and things like that. Yes, for professional growth. So if you're someone in your district is struggling with keeping track of that or you need a neater way to do that or maybe that person is you 
go ahead and use a Google form for something like that. Yeah, and actually Lisa and I are planning on doing that. There have been a couple of webinars that Corey has done recently. They did one on iOS 7 and then this one. We're going to put both of those together and have our uh, uh, people watch it. If they watch it, they're going to answer a couple of questions on a Google form. They'll submit that and we'll give them some professional growth points for watching those webinars. Right, and so in your district, uh, whatever district you're in, too, note that we are recording this and then it can be played back and it's on our website at the service unit. And we'll talk about that at the end as well. So what's cool and new? There, there have always been a few things within forms and it used to be somewhat, you know, somewhat uh, watered down in that you had some things like text and paragraph text and multiple choice and check boxes and all these items that you normally would have. But there's a couple things that we really want to talk about today specifically. Mickey, one of those big things is what? Images. That has been something that teachers especially have been clamoring for in Google Forms is the ability to add images to your Google Forms. And that came out last spring, um, and it's really been a wonderful addition to Google Forms. Right. And I heard them, this the most from, as you can imagine, elementary teachers. But it would also certainly add to a high school, you know, a junior high, high school environment. But there were so many elementary teachers that wanted to add a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say, you know, absolutely. And it just it just makes that form, that quiz, that assessment that much different or better. Yeah, and I'm not an elementary teacher, but I love my clip art. Mm -hmm. And so on any form that I do, basically now, I put a little piece of clip art on that form. Right. Just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. Right. And we'll give we'll show you some examples here in a little bit as well. Video is another one, which is huge. Watch this video. I think we have an example uh, later, but watch this video and then and then answer some questions about what you saw, what you heard, what you implied later. So these, these are, and if you're a Google Forms user in the past, you know how big of a deal this was for many. So if I wanted to add a picture, it's as simple as something like this. When you're in your Google Form and you wanted to add a picture, you're just going to insert that, but then you just get a simple um, screen like this here that, that just says, hey, you can either drag it right into that area or you can click on that blue box there that just says choose an image to upload. Right, and they and they do give you, if you see the full insert image option menu, they do give you several choices. So you can either um, have one saved on your computer or on your H or on your uh, Google Drive, right. or you can actually do a Google search right through within the insert picture option. Right, right. So you don't even have to go out to another tab or open up another window. You can do a Google search right within the insert image option. Right. So it just depends on where you've saved it or what you have done already. So if you just click on the choose an image to upload, then you just browse on your computer if you have it saved or wherever it is, and then you've got it in your form. Okay, next. Here's a good example that Mickey gave to me today. You want to talk about what we're looking at here? There's a couple things, the picture and then the type of question down at the bottom there. Right, well, when you go to insert an image, you can either um, put the questions above the image or below it. In this case, I found this um, map off of the internet. I added the letters on the states there. Um, and then I added the question below that. So I inserted the image and then added a question. This is a, an example of a grid question um, where they mm -hmm. would have to then identify each of the states based on the letters in the picture. Right. So as you're looking at this, I just thought this was a perfect example. So you, you found this map of the Northeast. You put the letters in yourself. And then, as you said, this is a grid option. So if you haven't ever seen these or used it, this is a perfect example of a grid option. So they're having, to, they're having to look at this map, look at letter A, and say, okay, letter A is what state, and then they click on that and move from there. Yeah, and I was a little worried about how this question was set up because there's so much data in here in this question, whether it would be um, understandable. And Lisa Pospichel has just chimed in in the chat that it was a great example, and she has a SPED background, so I'm assuming she's saying that it's an okay way to set up this question. Right, right. All right, next. Here's an example. Now, this isn't a live video right now. This is just a screenshot again, but imagine this as you're taking this, okay, versus a paper pen assessment, right, or a paper pen pencil quiz. Um, you're clicking on this video. In this case, it's out on YouTube. They're watching something about the information about the water cycle. They listen to it, and then immediately afterwards, they have questions. Yeah, this would be a great situation for all those flipped classrooms out there where you're wanting the kids to watch the videos outside of class, but you need to, you're either wondering if they are watching the videos, so you're checking to see with the questions after the uh, video in the form, you're checking to see whether or not they did watch the video and if they did understand what they were seeing. So for a flipped classroom situation, this insert video option into a Google form is huge. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, very much. I, I just love this, and I just keep comparing it to the paper pencil version, okay, where you have a question about the water cycle, and on you go. This, they have some information there that they can watch. But it's also, okay, so they're watching, they're listening, they're thinking, they've, they already know what the questions are because they can read below it, so they're looking and listening for that information within the video. So you know they're getting it, they understand the question, they're able to find it. It's just very different from where we grew up, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, time. This is a new one. Um, and there's, we, we had some discussions today about what were some of the uses, you know, and, and maybe this is another time where if you're in the chat room and you've used this, tell us how you've used this. But here's some ideas that we came up with today, just brainstorming. So if you're in a science lab, and again, this is a type of question here. Um, you can have your text and paragraph text and so on, but down here at the bottom, there's a time stamp there. Okay, so you can choose the time, and then you can click on duration right here, which changes it to hours, minutes, and seconds. So we were thinking, if, if I'm in a science lab, for instance, and the science teacher, right, is in the lab, and, want, and when you're done, yeah, he says, go to this link, answer these questions. You know, and it might be, how long did this take to react? You know, or how long did you watch it before you quit? Or, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah. Um, you know, just different options for using that time feature. Again, it's in one of the newer form, the newer options and uh, forms is the time and date. Um, mm -hmm. The math elapsed time. I don't. I, well, remind as, me again what we. Well, what as we far as about math there. elapsed time, you know, you know, there are many math problems, um, story problems. You know, how long did it take you to get from here to there? So I'm just we're trying to think of uses and reasons why you'd choose time as one of your form questions. So if you had a math question up above describing, you know. So if somebody traveled this far at this speed, how long did it take? You know, and then they can choose that time it's in, in, the, in the answer right. later. So again, not a lot of uses. Study time. You said you knew someone who asked the students how much, just as they're prepping for a quiz. Yeah, my, my husband, Chris, teaches math at the high school. And on every assessment that he gives his students, he always asks, how much time did you spend preparing for this test or this quiz? Um, so that could be a use for this particular uh, question type on Google Forms, too. You know, if you were trying to figure out a time when you were going to have a meeting, or, you know, if we're thinking about not maybe necessarily classroom uses, time you're going to schedule a meeting, or you need to have a group event someplace or sometime, um, and you could get people's opinions on what time to have it, that might be another use for this type of question. Right, and I'm looking at some of the comments. Um, back to the video. Um, like the available the availability of the video right there. You're exactly right. Where you don't have to go somewhere else and do something. You have everything right in front of you. And Lisa's suggesting maybe to use this the time question to log reading time if they're oh. having to read so much, you know, yeah. at night or something. That How would be an option. How much did you read this week? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, those sorts of things. So you know, just an informal uh, gathering of information. Okay. And then down at the bottom here, I just I just included this. Um, so where up here, I checked the duration, and it looked like hours, minutes, and seconds. But when I uncheck it, it just says hours and minutes, and then a.m. or p.m. So that, that's just the difference between checking that and unchecking that. Okay. Next, date. Here's, here's another example why you might, you know, maybe at the beginning of the year, you're just wanting information. If you don't have a school information system that's giving that to you right away, or you're someone who likes to send out, you know, those happy birthday cards, or you just want to know that sort of information, you can certainly use a form to, you know, and have the students you know, share their information that way. Because it's just, again, you've got it in your Google Docs. You can access it from whichever device you're on. Sure. Yeah, and, and again, if you're trying to schedule a meeting on a particular date, this would be what you could use the date question to indicate, to have people indicate when they were going to be free or when they were going to be available. Right. Right. So, you know, there, there are always practical things, uses that you'll come up with on your own. But these are just some of the new features within forms. So now we've got a couple polls here. All right, the first one I'm going to pull in here, and I'll have to open it for you. Okay. And it says, how many different question types are available on a Google form? So everyone watching, if you'd click on that and vote, and then in a minute here, we'll see. Now it looks like nine is a big player. Oh, 
Okay, let's broadcast the results. And of the people who voted, looks like nine. Now I'm more curious who who can answer who can answer which ones those or what what were those types of questions? Use your chat room here. All right, I'll start it off. There was a text, and I put that in there. Mickey, do you remember another one just to get them rolling here? Oh, oh I've got people got, typing. Yep, Grid. I'm wait. They're gonna... That's two. Check boxes is three. List four. Oh, I see a multiple choice from mm -hmm. Mike C and Joyce. So how many do we have there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It was nine, but let's see. What was the ninth one? We're missing one. Oh, scale. Ah, scale. And the scale is an example of rate this um, activity, you know, with one being the lowest and five being the highest. Right. Good job, Mickey. Scale. You do not win the prize because you're part of the webinar. Oh, darn it. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Next one. Next one. And this is leading into our this is leading into our next activity here. All right, here we go. Would you rather hand correct a pile of papers, be honest, or create an assessment that will that can be graded for you? All right. I'm going to broadcast the results. You'll be shocked here. Or maybe you won't. Okay. Ah, there interesting. It is. I like my assessments graded for me. Mickey. Yes, I, I uh, when I was in the classroom, I definitely took any advantage of having those assessments graded for me. So that leads us into our next area, which is called Fluberoo. If you haven't seen or heard of Fluberoo, you need to listen to this and try this out. Okay, so let's get rid of that poll, and here we go. Fluberoo. Uh, we added the website here, so if you needed more information later or wanted to go to the website, you can certainly do that, and there's a video on there. Now, first of all, I want to make sure that everyone understands the price of this. Mickey. You know, in these times that are tough, economic times, how much is Flubaroo? Well, uh, you can get Flubaroo for the bargain, bargain basement price of free. Zero dollars. Zero dollars. So, you know, if there was an applause now, a sound effect, I would put that in there. So you guys can actually clap if you know how to do that. Um, you can actually go up to your little person there and, and make them clap. But uh, we won't get into that right at the moment. All right, so Flubaru, transforming. See that? See this pile of papers here? Patty just clapped for us. Oh, so did thank she? You. I you, see Patty. that. Lisa P is clapping too, up in, up in the presenter uh, participant area. So here's your papers. You used to carry this home. Maybe you stayed at school. You worked through it. Now, now, first of all, there's always a Mac PC debate and things like that, Chromebook and so on. Does it? Does Flubaru care which device you're using? Flubaru does not care which device you are using. How about Google? Google does not care which device you are using. So Google's free. Google Forms is free. Free. Flubaru is free. Yes. And it doesn't care which device you're on. I mean, that, that's the perfect solution for win, any school system. Win, win, win. Win, win. All right. So here we go. So again, we're assuming that you know how to create a form and the people that listen to this, you know, know how to do this. So even if you haven't ever created a form, basically when you create a form, you get a spreadsheet because that's where the answers come into. So what you're looking at here is just a screenshot of a spreadsheet that you'll see in your Google form. Now, what are you seeing up top there, Mickey? Well, this is um, how you're going to go get Flubaroo to um, add it to your spreadsheet. So basically, uh, Flubaroo is a script, and there are really smart people that are out there that write these scripts. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't need to know anything about um, programming, right. scripting, nothing, okay? So somebody else has already written the script for us. We just need to know where it is to go get it and install it. And it's a super right. simple process. Right. Um, you just go to the tools menu, you go to script gallery, right. and um, you search for Flubaroo. Right, and that, that's the, the biggest piece there is just knowing where to go to get started with this because what you have to do, everybody, as you're listening, you have to – install this script to have it graded for you. If you don't install this script, it will not work. And I want to add before I forget it, each quiz or assessment or whatever you want graded for, you have to install the script. So once you've done it a time or two, you really get good at it. 
Yeah, well, and it's and not it's not hard anyway. No, no, it, it walks you through the process step by step. So you just read the directions and click next or whatever it tells you to do. So it is really simple, but Corey's right. Every um, assessment that you do a Google Form quiz for, you would need to install the script in that spreadsheet. Right, so tools and script gallery. All right, it's step number one. You have to search for it. And when you, when you get ready to search, you see a screen that looks just like this, and you just simply type in Flubaru. Now, notice you get this other, you know, bit set. I don't even know what that is. But what you want is this Flubaru right here. Okay? And now, once you find that, if I had never done this before, I'd probably want to do what? Where, where would your eyes go automatically that you want to do what with it? I'm thinking you want to install it. Right. Exactly. So, first, you're going to Tools and Script Gallery. And then, once you get to Script Gallery, you are typing in the word Flubaru which brings up this Flubaru here, and then you want to install it, all right? When you go to install these things, it'll ask for your permission, of course, you'll, you'll grant it, and you'll approve it, and say yes, and so on. Now, once it's installed on your spreadsheet, this wasn't here before. What do you see there, Mickey, now? Uh, a new menu that's called Flubaru. Right, that's how you know whether or not you've been successful, okay? If, if you don't see that, then that, that really means, in the end, that you, perhaps maybe didn't install what you thought you were installing. So there's Flubu right there. Right, and I, will, and I will back up just one step before that. It does ask you in the installation process to authorize a bunch of things, and it looks kind of big and scary, but it's just allowing Flubu to get at what it needs to get at to work. So just go ahead and authorize all of those, Flubu to access all of those apps, and then the Flubu menu will appear in your right. spreadsheet. Right, and I tell people that awful when they call. Right, you just say yes, yeah, accept, just, go yes. on. In this case, that is very, That's much, okay. that is very much true. So just accept whatever, whatever it is that they're asking you to do. So now that you've installed it successfully, you have Flubru at the top um, of your list. Now this will not be there until you install it. So that's, that's a good point there. So then after that, it's magic time. So what happens then after this, you click on Flubru and then you Go down to grade assignment. Now, what happens when you grade the assignment? There are several things that need to be in place. And one, probably the most important thing, is in this quiz that you've created, Mickey, you have to, as the teacher, should take it first. And, and obviously, you're going to choose the correct answers. Right. Because Be once you're in it, then what happens? Right. Uh, w one of the first things that Flubaru is going to ask you when you go to grade the assignment is uh, which one is the answer key? Which quiz do you want to use to be the answer key? And that's why it's important that you, the teacher, go through and take the quiz first with the correct answers and then use that, um, that record to work as the answer key for you. Right. So I typed in here which one is the answer key and then you're going to pick, and in this case I'm going to say your, you know, I'll, I'll pick the, you know, the, the quiz that the teacher took. Um, pick the teacher um, answers and let me click enter here so people can see that. So what you're going to do is pick yours because it's going to say, oh, this is the one that has the correct answers. True? Right, right. Otherwise and it doesn't know how to pick which one's right, which one's wrong. It doesn't know how to grade the quiz, right, exactly. Exactly, okay. So then after you do that, you're going to get something that looks something very similar like this. Now let's let's start up here at the top. Right away, and this is what it does for you, it's saying, okay, uh, we just did a, a quick fake quiz here. There are three possible points. The average points, it figures the average, and how many submissions there were. We, we took this quiz four times. Okay, and it gives you all this information. It also gives you the time that it was taken and the name of the person. Now, it actually pulls the name from the quiz. It doesn't, it doesn't know this, does it? No. I mean, in, in, our, in our form, we had to put a question that said, First name, last right. name. Right. Those were like those were questions that we included on the form. Now, and clearly, as far as the questions go, it's not grading um, their names. That's something no, that is and ungraded. That, right. And that's one of the things that when you go through and set up the script, it asks you um, which one, uh, which which questions should be graded, and right. which ones are recognizing the student. So that was that one we set to student information, so it did not grade first name and last name. And Fluberu is very smart. Fluberu on its own will recognize that first name shouldn't be graded. You can always change it, of course, if you wanted to, but it recognizes it, doesn't it? Right, So yeah. I, I appreciate that. 
you know, especially as a new user to it, if you were. So here's total points. Here, here's Now, I, I separated this from the top. This would be one straight line on your spreadsheet, but just for our screenshots and the screen, I put it below. So I can see here that at Beyonce, right, two points, it's created for you, how many times they submitted it, and then this email grade. You want to talk about this? If I would have in my form included what, what can we do with an email? Right. Um, if you request that the students enter their email address, or if you're a Google Apps for Education domain, when you create a form, you actually have the option of collecting this, the username, um, which in this case would be the student's email address. If you get that information, then through Fluberoo, once you grade the quiz, you can actually email the results to the students. Mm -hmm. And it will list the right the question, if they got it right or if they got it wrong, and their score. Right. So here's one question here. Today is what day? And so it grades it for you. It tells you that out of the four people that took it, only two got it right. Here's the next one. Forms are awesome, true or false. And one was true in this case, so they all got it right. And then the last one, they had to actually pick two presidents, and clearly they got it right here. So all they had to do was take the quiz. I have already installed Flubrew on my assessment. I said grade this assessment. And I click a couple buttons, and it grades it for me. Done. Done. I mean, you know, for me, I would much rather do it this way than take a bunch of papers home or even walk myself down to the office to use the Scantron machine, right. you know, because if it's busy and I have to wait for it to get, you know, to be available, I mean, this I can do whenever I want. I just install the Fluberoo script and run it, and it's done. Right. Lisa's pointing out something here that we can, we can look at uh, quick here. Um, right over here, and I'll circle it here. You'll notice the color, and the color shows you what maybe needs a little bit more work. It highlights it. So this is, if I was differentiating or needed to know who I needed to pull to further further go over this, um, what day is today, um, I would know who to, who to do that with. And then we have some questions here. It says, so does it automatically, once you've selected the option initially, go to each of the individual students? Um, Julie, I'm not sure what you mean by that question, but you actually would have to go back up to the Fluberoo menu and email the grades out to the kids. So just running the uh, Fluberoo script once, the first time it just grades it. So you would have to actually go back up to the Fluberoo menu and choose to email the grades out to the students. Okay. Hopefully that helps, okay. Julie. Right. Any other questions? Because we usually like to keep this right at a half an hour. We're at 414. But in a sense, instead of taking this assessment, and let's say there's 25 or 30 questions, right? And it takes quite a while to work through each one and then figure the grade. You're doing this um, using your technology that you have in your building, and it's graded for you, and out the door you go. But I still like that it's not, it's just not doing all your work and you're not looking at it because just like Lisa pointed out here, we're looking at and we're, we're analyzing the data and seeing what needs to be worked on or reassessed or retaught later. Right, and, and I think that that, piece of it is kind of a newer feature to Fluberoo. And just like with all the Google products, good script authors are always updating their scripts. And Fluberoo is one that does get updated. So I think that's a newer feature that actually points, points that at part of it out. How do you guard against cheating? It says, now, if I was doing this in the classroom, Mickey, you know, I'm walking around the room just like I would if they were normally just taking a paper pencil test. So, I mean, as far as cheating goes, I don't know if I would allow them necessarily, depending on what it is, to be at home and taking your assessment. I don't know if that's what she's asking, but if I'm doing this in a classroom where they have laptops open, I'm walking around, you know, and you're making sure that they're they're keeping their eyes on their screen and right. things and, like that. And I think another way too is I wouldn't, if I had multiple sections of this class taking this quiz, I would not email the grades to the students until after every class was done, you know, after every student had, take, had taken the quiz, then I would email the results. But yeah, I mean, it's just like cheating if on a paper pencil test, right. you know, it, Teacher vigilance right. is the number one uh, method to prevent that, I guess. Right. Okay. So let's now here on, on the last screen here on our website, on ESU8.org's website, um, we have this uh, webinar uh, link here. And this is where each week, if you're wondering what our Wednesday webinar is, you'll see a live link there as well as the you can come back at any time and then click on those links to, let's say, for instance, listen to this one again. Or if you missed some in the past, you can certainly pop in on those. So please visit our website. Mickey, thank you for coming today, and then we look forward to doing this again in the future sometime. Thank you, Corey. All right. Thank you, everybody.